All right. This is the second attempt at doing this. The first one, my colleague came by to ask a, a very important question, and um, I forgot. I thought I hit escape, option, mouse, pause it. But what I did was I wound up recording it, and so I deleted the last thing. All right. Projectile motion. I, I didn't want to turn this whole thing into a in, into a crazy physics book that you could you know you could download off the in, in, internet um, and uh, and then I didn't want to spend seven hours looking in open source stuff for graphs and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tell you what I know about projectile motion. I've been teaching this crap for 20 years. I think I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's not crap, by the way. It's it's really cool stuff. Um, and and I'm just going to use, it's just going to be old school, just like I'm on a whiteboard and you're learning it, okay? So let's take, so without further ado, let's take a look. And, and you'll get a lot more of this stuff in, in future chapter, in future sections of, of, the, of this chapter. All right, so here we are. We've got this projectile motion. I launched something. And another thing I got to show you, if you all want to go here to this FET site, uh, dot org, um, they 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 do it too, and I'm, I'll I'll probably um, before we completely break here, I I'm going to go um, and show you what that looks like in projectile motion. It'll be a lot of fun, All right? But anyway, so we launched something. So here we break it down into this is supposed to be the same thing. All right, here's the deal. Here's the deal. V not x. The, the velocity, the component of the velocity, it breaks down into two components. That's why we call it two dimensions. It's got two dimensions. It's got an X and a Y dimension. VX never changes. You know why? Because we neglect air resistance. We, air resistance or any kind of drag. All right? We, this is schoolhouse. Air resistance or any kind of drag. V not Y. The Y component changes all the time, changes constantly. And when things have constant changes, that's why we use calculus and stuff like that. But we're not going to do that. You're just conceptually, it, may, it makes sense. If, if I throw something in the air, it comes back down, right? Piece of cake, all right? And it comes back down. If I throw it up in the air at 10 miles per hour, it's going to come back to the earth at 10, negative 10 miles per hour. We know that. So, so what happens is, as this thing's going through its flight, the X component looks like this. It's always the same. Always the same. Always the same. The Y component gets smaller until we're at the maximum height when the Y is equal to zero. The Y component of the velocity is equal to zero. And then we start coming along here. X stays the same. Y starts to get bigger coming down here until Y is equal to down here okay that's projectile motion all right and we'll do a lot more of it a little bit later on now here's the other thing if i if i launch something from a building let's say i i i get patrick mahomes up here to throw a football off uh, from 10 meters high so that 10 meters is probably about two and a half stories up in the air because it's like 33 feet it's way the hell up there all right so he throws a football. This is supposed to be a football. All right. It actually kind of looks like a it looks like a French loaf of bread. All right. So he throws this French loaf of bread at Patrick Mahomes, can throw it at 70 miles per hour. Guess what? If he'd have dropped it, bonk. And if he'd have and, and him throwing it, bonk. Guess what? They're going to hit at the same time. Same time. Be you know why? Because the only, the only, okay, did I say that enough? One more time. The only acceleration that's happening here is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. As soon as that French loaf left Patrick Mahomes' hand, gravity took over. As soon as this thing, as soon as the soccer player kicked this ball, gravity took over. Okay? And we'll get, in, get into more of it later. One last little note is that if I do this, let's say we've got our little coordinate thing here. 
and I kick a ball at 15 degrees, okay, at 15 degrees, it's going to have this kind of range. It's going to have this range, and that's what we call it. We call it the range. And if I kick the ball at 75 degrees, this angle is 75 degrees. Guess what? It's going to, that's going to have the same range. The ranges are going to be the same. What do I know about 75 and 15? They add up to 90 degrees. So they wind up hitting the same thing. I've got a cute little simulation I'm going to show you in the next video.